Hello, explorers. Welcome to episode four of Exploring with Explorer. Stay with me for three minutes, and I'll teach you two things, and you'll never look at logging in ServiceNow the same way again. First, I'm going to show you how to debug your own scripts faster and better with Explorer. And second, I'll show you how to explore out-of-box script includes without modifying the objects. So I just jumped into my Wayback Machine to show you how you might have done this before. So you would have either been in fixed scripts or in background scripts. And here I've just pasted in a script it's really simple. It goes through a loop 100 times and it pumps out a random number. Then it evaluates the random number to see if it is between uh, 1 and 35, that will call the tollable range. Then 36 to 70, that will be the warning range. Then 71 and up, and that's what we'll call the failure range. So a really simple script to demonstrate what we can do for logging. You'll also see that we use gs.log, gs.info, gs.warn, and gs.error. Let's just see what this does for us. We've got a bunch of logged out errors, which is fine. It worked. Let's see what system log showed us. Let's do this quick refresh. Okay, and we do see the individual entries in the log. Now this is actually where it gets frustrating because this system log is packed with everything else that goes into a system log too. Furthermore, the system log doesn't pay attention to milliseconds, so the order that you see stuff in here isn't always what you would expect. But brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that there is a better way. So here we are in the export interface with the exact same script. Let's see what happens when we run this. Just look at that gorgeous output. GS logs in gray, info in blue, warn in yellow, and error in red. Already I'm way happier with the aesthetics. I can also copy and paste this easily into Word or Excel and it retains all that lovely formatting. And if you wanted to get really fancy about it, you can even put HTML tags into the log message and the output will obey that rule. But let's crank it up a notch. Let's say anytime I fire an error message, I also want to send not just a single value, but entire object of data. I'm just going to paste in a new script here. And in our case, we're gonna build an output object and we're gonna send the value with a message attached, the iteration within the loop that we're in, and also just a half the value for that iteration. Let's see how Explore handles that. Now we see that the output object that we embedded in the GS error message displays in Explore as JSON. Can background scripts do that? Let's see. Here we are in background scripts. I've pasted in the same script from Explore. Let's run the script. And we see that whenever it's going to give the GS error, it gives us this object object thing, which isn't useful to us in any capacity. What about system logs? Here we'll go to system logs. We'll just give it a quick refresh. And we can see that this error message isn't giving us what we want. So not only is Explore more aesthetically pleasing, but also has more capabilities than the out-of-box system locks. Now, have you ever wondered how to explore script includes without heavily modifying the out-of-box objects? Here, I'm gonna use Explore to go find a script that exists on the system. I'm gonna search for time card days utils, which is a script include that I've built. And please excuse the redax, this is still work in progress. And I don't wanna expose all the code. So we've got the script include in Explore at the very bottom. I'm just going to put in some code that actually calls it. So I'm creating a new, uh, time card glide record and I'm getting a specific time card that exists in my system then I'm calling the time card day utils and feeding it that time card now let's put some logging within this to utilize with explore up here I've just put in a GS info to tell us that the time card days utils has been initialized and then in the find rate function I put in a GS warn warning us that the find rate function has been fired let's see what happens I've run it and we can see that the script include is outputted the two logs that I inserted. This is extremely powerful because it lets you explore those out of box script includes without you having to modify those script includes, putting in your own GS log items, running through complex use cases, and then searching through your system logs after. Without this utility, I could not have done my last ITPM implementation, which required a lot of custom coding. Now you have a cleaner, more powerful way to debug your own scripts, as well as a way to explore out-of-box scripts without altering them. As always, friends, hit that subscribe button with the bell icon because I'm publishing new ServiceNow content all the time. Smash that like and share button for the good karma. And lastly, if you want ServiceNow guidance or coaching with the kind of passion and depth of knowledge that you see here, check the description below for how to contact us. Thanks for watching.